Chapter 3 Standoff <clears throat> I need to talk. I thought about going back to sleep, but I couldn't. Since I'd arrived in the village, I felt like I was falling down a rabbit hole, or rather a wolf's den. My dreams were getting more and more vivid, and I was scared. I needed to talk it over with someone I trusted. Kim is sympathetic. Kim seemed okay. Anya is loyal. Anya was in it from the start, or the problem was is I didn't trust anyone. I think Kim works with Cornell, right? I think so, yeah. So I'm going to go with that. Cause as much as I really do trust Anya and would like to talk to her, I think this is more of a starting to get towards Kim problem. Kim is sympathetic. I thought about Kim. Uh, they had... They had to have lots of experience, and they seemed to accept all the strange shit that life throws at us. We definitely hit it off well. The sun had just set, and the moon wasn't up yet. I started walking, and I didn't want to wake Anya up. The forest loomed on the horizon. Uh, the activist camp was somewhere there. I soon ran into Anya. Oh, wow. Anya is loyal. Oh, Maya, good to see you, she said. We need to talk. I was all ears. It's weird that she's here. Also, looking at the pictures now, Anya's the one with braids, huh? So it seems. Yeah, I always thought that was us. But yeah, no, because she just appeared in the thing. So yeah, yeah. When they first explained it to her, I thought they were switched. But... I was worried about you. Since we had got here, you looked distressed, she explained. With a sigh, I've asked around, and it seems you're associating with some dangerous people. Goldeste. Uh, I, they know something about me, something I don't know, I answered, and I need that information. And I could use some support, she could come with me if she wanted, or I had to go alone. I think she can come with me if she wanted. I know you have your own things to do, I admitted, but if you want, you can come with me. Anya is loyal. She smiled. Sure, sister. And we walked together. Few First weeks. off, few you've weeks. known each other a few, few weeks. weeks. Few weeks. <laughs> I wonder if you just have like some kind of aura that pulls the people in. Or pushes them away. All together now. Uh, the camp had a different vibe than the logging site protests. There were more people there. We looked around, trying to take it all in. Uh, they are coming and coming, Anya laughed, excited. The people in the camp seemed quite cheerful. The smells were intriguing. I watched them for a moment, where someone was singing. I watched them for a moment. I saw people at work. Some of them were filling big barrels with sand. Some were busy making what seemed to be posters. The rest were singing and cooking. Everyone was contributing in one way or another. I looked around. I definitely needed to talk to someone about what was going on, about what I felt. I saw Kim talking to Cornell. Olga was there as well. I, mean, I saw Kim talking to Cornell. I'm going that way. Hello. I said as I approached. Cornell smiled at me. Hello, he said. What brings you here? I needed answers, or I was confused with the zero rage. Um. I think I need answers. Uh, yeah. I shrugged and dug my hands deeper into my pockets of my jeans. Uh, I have so many questions about myself, the forest, and the logging. Cornell looked at me with those uncanny gray eyes. I could feel his attention locked on me. It's okay, he said. Join us and you'll understand. We're here to, uh, to stop what's happening, to show that we don't agree, and that we hope to make a difference. Uh, will, uh, will it work? Will it work, I asked? I don't know. All I know is... That it worked before, it worked for Gandhi, 
uh, it worked with segregation and apartheid <laughs> in the end it worked for or with communism so let's see if it works with capitalism as well violence is not an option here he smiled and I think you know quite well that anger doesn't really get shit done I knew that or plus one rage I didn't agree a funny story about me in general is that I actually believe that it's a mixture of both but I knew that is what I'm going with I smiled back uh, somehow being around him made me feel more relaxed you know you can count on me I answered I know, you can count on me. Okay. Uh, I had a chance to make a difference, but I couldn't just be an observer anymore. So we may have a little citizen protest going on tonight, Cornell said, but I'll, I'll need your support if we want to convince the others. The tipping point. Uh, they all wanted to do something that night but after a whole day's discussion they were still divided on what to do three uh, for one option and three for the other I had the deciding vote and the funny part is the fact that going with the whole thing I'm just some random person why the hell do I get a vote now unbeknownst to my character as a werewolf amongst the werewolves I get a vote that's why they're so happy that I'm here. Because it was a three on three battle. They needed that fourth or uh, seventh person to tip the scales in one direction or the other. I'm going with Cornell's fine. Not sure why he's only neutral with me, but. A little help from my friends. I voted for the peaceful protest, and soon we were on our way to the National Park headquarters and education center. We had some banners to install. Anya tagged along, or I asked Anya to go home. Um, Anya tagged along. This is so exciting, she, Anya whispered. I've never done anything so illegal. <laughs> Just the way that... Because uh, she says the exact same thing if you go the other direction. But, yeah. Soon we were there. And I gained a will. Uh, goal progression. As we were on our way, I realized that we followed the path only because of my vote. I made a difference. The National Park headquarters were located in something called Palace Park. The name was historical. The name, like everything in Poland, was historical. Centuries ago, some king had his hunting lodge there, but uh, now it was a mystery mishmash of old and new buildings scattered around the park. Some were rough and bulky, some were stone and brick, uh, while others were ex were an extravaganza of wooden porches, uh, lace-like shutters, and meticulously sculpted pillars. There was no one around, but the area was well lit. It was exhilarating. I looked around, or I needed to be careful. I want to go with, it was exhilarating because, you know, it's pretty cool, but with how Olga is, I think we should be careful because if she starts going into her freaking rage again, then it could screw up everything that we're doing. Like, we're trying to go for a peaceful protest. If she doesn't follow along, then... This wasn't your everyday act of vandalism. This was something bigger. More important, yes, but also more dangerous. Getting arrested in Poland didn't seem like a great way to start my visit. On the contrary. Oh, yeah, I can't say that word. Contrary, I can't say Yeah, yeah, moving on. In fact, it could be the end of it. Suddenly I remembered the church located just next to Palace Park Gate. I could feel its dark silhouette looming in the darkness, waiting. We were ready, 
or suddenly I started to have I started having second thoughts. No, we were right. Let's just do it. They'd spent the whole day painting this uh, the sign on a length of material sewn together from what looked like old sheets uh, that were various shades of grayish white. The dark green letters declared wood is the enemy of the wood is the enemy of the forest um where do we hang it asked daniel who'd come equipped with climbing gear uh, i shared my recommendations we could cover the church uh or rage zero never mind as long as we acted fast i'll give my recommendations i don't know what it is but i think we should attach it to the drain pipes there and there. I pointed to two corners of the building and Daniel grunted in agreement. It doesn't matter, Olga said, because hanging the banner is a waste of time. Zero rage. I looked at her, curious what kind of advice she could offer us. I let her talk or I asked her for advice. I let her talk. Olga looked at me as though she expected to say expected me to say something but I didn't take the bait. It's a great banner, and I'm sure it will look good on it. The pictures published by a number of independent political blogs, she looked at Cornell, but it's stuck so deep into the overeducated ecological uh, dispute that people won't get it and the loggers won't care. Uh, Cornell just shook his head and gestured Daniel, Daniel to continue. I waited patiently. As soon as the sign was up, uh, screaming our message to all of White Tower, Cornell looked at me. Maya, what do you think? I didn't like that slogan, or I said it was glorious and lose willpower. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. I didn't really get the slogan, but I decided to play it cool. Oh, I sighed. It's glorious. I'm glad you think so, he grinned. I love the wording. Humans let the forest grow so they can take the wood from it. But that isn't the purpose of the forest. Finally, we pulled up the banner. Uh, it's an important message, Anya looked up with fire in her eyes. The world must know. I looked at the sign flying over high over the park. I was proud of our work. When we finished, Cornell gathered us together. I was proud of what we'd accomplished. I contribute to that gain of willpower. It's almost like an evening use one. Uh, progression and goal. Uh, maybe it was my destiny to find peaceful solutions to the conflict. Cornell reached for his bicycle. Uh, let's go for a trip, he said, to remind ourselves what we're trying to protest. Gunshots in the woods. Pushka is sympathetic. The woods were full of stars. We bicycled, or we cycled in silence, enjoying the company of the forest as it enjoyed ours. At some point, a clearing opened up to us. It was surrounded by boulders placed in a circle. They looked relaxed. A soft breeze rustled in the trees, welcoming us. I was tense, plus a rage. Uh, what was this place? Or Anya chuckled. I'm going to go with Anya chuckled. This is exciting. Anya chuckled and I relaxed. Uh, zero rage. There was some kind of energy there flowing around trying to reach me, but it couldn't. Uh, not without my permission. I was ready to act. So why were we there? Or I wondered if anyone else felt it as well. I'm going to go with that one. Do you guys feel that? I looked at my companions, but before I could answer, a loud shot, a loud sound tore through the silence. It was a gunshot. A gunshot. Uh, Anya gasped, looking around wide-eyed and terrified. The others tensed up, but they didn't uh, look concerned, just confused. Who's there? Cornell shouted. There was a rustle, and I saw a bunch of men in camo. Uh, each of them with a rifle coming towards us uh, behind the trees. I took a step back, or uh, I observed them. I observed them. Well, uh, yeah, loser willpower, yeah. 
I watched their angry steps and listened to the murmurs, murmured curses. Suddenly, I noticed Bartek was with them. He winced when he saw me. Their leader weighed us up for a moment and finally focused on Cornell. This area is closed for the night, the huntsman said in Polish. There was contempt in his voice. Uh, there is a hunt going on and y'all are trespassing. Sorry. I'm trying to deal with a cat that doesn't know where to be. Uh, we have police officers here, so I would go home if I were you, unless you want to get arrested. Spiritual. I felt the forest tense up. The man was the one who... The men were the one who were trespassing. I tried to de-escalate. I turned to the forest for advice. Or zero rage, I backed off. I'm going to try de-escalating it. Analytical. Uh, spiritual. Uh, I assessed the situation. There was still a chance we could talk our way out of it. Reasonably. I took a step forward. Let's be reasonable. I looked at the hunters. Maybe we should all go home, I said in Polish. We're disturbing the forest. I knew it was true. In, a mo in that moment, I was the voice of the forest and the branches moved in rhythm of with my breathing. Zero rage, I turned to them. Zero rage. I turned to the hunters, displaying more confidence than I had. I t looked at Bartek and... But he just turned his eyes away. You don't tell me what to do, uh, girl. The huntsman barked, and I realized, with a shock, that it was that he was Bartek's dad. You hippies go home now, or things will get nasty. I shrugged, or I tried to calm him down using a willpower. I'm gonna use that. <clears throat> I'm not telling you what to do. I'm speaking to everyone here. I answered. He hesitated. And then shrugged. This is our forest. We grew up uh, with it and we're not going anywhere. You're the ones who are strangers, so get the fuck out of here. The forest belonged to no one. He shouldn't have ignored the forest. Or he did he really need more enemies? I think I have to go with the forest and belong to anyone. But at the exact same time... I want to go with the zero rage. I'll uh, we'll go with that. That's bullshit. The forest belongs to no one, I calmly answered. He, uh, he won't listen, Olga said, cracking her knuckles, and then she launched at him. It escalated quickly. A heartbeat later, a full-blown fight began. Zero rage. Uh, everything was in slow motion, and I could see my new friends grinning and throwing themselves at the armed hunters, paying not paying attention to the fact that they had had rifles at all. Anya took a step towards the fight, then hesitated. She looked at me. Zero rage. Uh, willpower use. I cursed and joined the fight, or that was too much for me, and I ran away. Fuck. Uh, night fight. Your willpower dropped to zero. When you lose all your health and, or all your willpower, you become impaired. This will make uh, physical tasks if you have zero health or social or, and mental tasks if you have zero willpower harder and sometimes impossible. Zero rage. The clearing shattered like a broken window into sharp pieces, its edges cut clean by the rays of light of the flashlight swirling in the darkness. Uh, one piece, a shout, another, a silhouette leaping, a dodge, a grunt, a punch, a cry, curses in three different languages. I slipped between pieces hiding in the shadow. A body slammed uh, into one of the men, and he stumbled. A body slammed into one of the men, and he stumbled. Ah. I prepared for his reaction. I lured him into the forest, or I... I threw dirt in his eyes. I prepared for his reaction. Wow, apparently I'm going really analytical now. Uh, 
I took a step back, getting ready for his action. When he jumped at me, I moved to the side and tripped him when he lost his balance. There was a loud thud and he fell to the ground. The flat, the flashlight shone his way. Uh, Anya screamed. Anya screamed and grabbed my arm. I saw blood. Blood on his head. Blood on the stone next to his head. Blood on the ground. Dark and fresh. A victory, plus one rage. He had it coming, or I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. My heart sunk. What I, what I had done. What had I done? I took a step back. Then I heard a shout. She killed him, one of the men shouted. A horror cleared in his... The horror clear in his voice. He directed a flashlight at my face, blinding me. I covered my eyes. Suddenly I realized what we were doing. Or I moved out of the light. I moved out of the light. I stumbled back into the darkness. It was just too much. Because I have no willpower and zero rage, I felt overwhelmed. The gravity of the situation dawned on me. The darkness, the shouting of fear, or the shouting, the fear. I felt as if the pieces of broken glass were starting to pierce my skin and my brain. I collapsed. I raised my hand to my head and curled up into a ball. I'm sorry, I shouted, almost crying. I didn't mean to. Leave her alone, someone growled. Uh, recognizing that voice, I raised my head. Was it Cornell? It was Cornell. He was bulging, muscles growing bigger, bones getting longer. He let out a joyous roar, throwing his hands, now equipped with strong claws, in the air. Uh, he grabbed the man and slashed across his torso. Zero rage. I looked at the eight feet tall, fur-covered monstrosity, and for a moment I hoped I was dreaming. I shook my head. Something warm landed on my face. More blood. Uh, howls. Terrified screams. Anya looked at me, panicked. What do we do? The man screamed again and pointed a gun at Cornell. I attacked Cornell. Oh, I can't uh, do any of those. I oh. turn around is all I can do. Hmm. Wow. Okay, well. I turned towards the forest and started to run. This was too much. I looked back. A gunshot tore through the night. And then I lose a health and there was only pain. Two health. Uh, bloody moon. The pain was unbearable. Uh, nothing in my life had prepared me for this. I knew I was dying or I started laughing. I started laughing. Uh, blinded by the blood in my eyes and the searing pain in my shoulder and chest, I could only laugh. Uh, this wasn't what I expected from this trip, so you spend so much time planning only to see your life, your whole life crash and burn. All I could do was laugh. And then I lose another health, but I knew how serious it was. So I laughed, grinning with bloodied teeth until my strength lifted me and I couldn't hold myself upright anymore. Uh, the forest caught my fall with the bed of moss and twigs. I stopped thrashing, uh, and a cold numbness engulfed me. I can only choose. I gave up. My eyes were open, and I started. I stared blankly up at the trees. There was a small fragment in the sky, uh, visible between the branches. The clouds moved, and there was a light, uh, there was light, a full moon. It looked different. Da -da! Luna in her full glory. The moon was a goddess, and she noticed me. Get up, she said. I got up. I get up. I feel good. I know that I shouldn't, but I don't remember why. I don't care stretch breathe or my mind is clear i'm gonna stretch get my health back uh, my muscles are sore and cramped so i stretch like i've never stretched before my arms are longer my legs are lo stronger 
my heart is pumping and I feel like I've spent my whole life packed into a box and I've finally been set free. I'm like, clear my mind and get my willpower back. My mind is clearer than it's ever been before. I see the world in a sharp contrast of black and white movement and stillness. I smell prey. I hear language in the hooting of owls, the whistling of the wind, and the snarling of wolves. I, my fate has found me. And I breathe and get my rage back. Ew, rage. <laughs> yeah, well, you'll need that for combat. I know. Just fucking. <laughs> it, I take a breath and feel my ribs and muscles move. The forest smells of blood and fear and excitement. I'm happy. I laugh happily and the other's laughter joins me. We laugh and sing to the moon. Something stings me. I look around. There's a small malformed creature pointing a stick at me. The stick blazes with fire and... There's another sting. Uh, balanced rage. The creature disgusts me. Its arms are too st short. Its legs bent the wrong way. It's covered with a tangled mass of dead plants and the skin of tortured animals. It reeks of dark. Are things dark and slimy and decayed? I rip its head off. I stick my hand in it. Or I push it away. I think I'm just going to rip its head off. Uh, it's one of those things where... Really? I'm afraid that if I do the other two, it will hurt me more. So. I reach out and lazily rip its head off of its shoulders. Uh, blood blooms from the neck like a beautiful flower. I throw my head towards the moon. My ears prick and I hear more creatures running blindly through the bushes. I feel better and get help. My legs, my leg no longer stings, but I feel better than before. Hunt, uh, pray hunt, or is this a dream? Is this a dream? Maybe it's a dream, I think, as I move silently through the overgrowth, undergrowth. Uh, low rage. The creatures are running away, their backs turned to me. They stumble and shout. Suddenly one of them turns my way. It is terrified. I attack, I roar, or I just look at it. I roar. I roar, and the creature falls down and curls into a ball. I s it smells of ammonia. Piercing light burns my eyes. The creatures uh, surround me. They seem to work like a pack. They are dangerous. I fight them all. I strike them one by run, one, or I run away. I fight them all. With a roar, I attack them as they slowly stumble, trying to understand what's happening. I. There are sharp noises, there are sudden flashes, and the air smells of fire and singed hair. I lose some health. It hurts. Two health, to be fair. They hurt me. I bite and punch and I roar. A new smell? Little rage. Uh, the wind brings a new smell. The air tastes of fur and musk and blood. Shapes move along the trees, but they sun but they are no creatures. They are people like me. Suddenly I'm surrounded by them. I think I know them. They seem familiar. It's like I've met them in the past, but they were hidden. Uh, they close in on me. What do they want? Uh, I defend myself, I keep them away, or lose a willpower as well, and wait. I uh, Enrage, yeah, and yeah, I'm gonna wait. I relax and wait for them. Unflinching, they approach me and sniff the air. Their smells are overwhelmingly familiar. Uh, once the people had sounds attached to them, but now I realize the sounds were not their true names. With zero rage, uh, I look up at and see no moon, only clouds and entangled branches. Something changes. Hey, that's my line. Something changes. And I turn into a human. Something changed and I realized how tired I was. I stumbled. Darkness. 
My old friend. <laughs> uh, nothing was okay. The night sky was full of stars. I opened my eyes. Confused, I opened my eyes. The forest around me was thick and dark. The tree trunks wrapped tightly in dark-leaved ivy were covered in ripples of glitchen where the vines hadn't taken hold. The thorny leafless bushes at their base were overrun with nettles. The fungi radiated in a ghoulish sickly green light. Dark sponge-like mushrooms clung to the fallen trees. I tried to breathe. It was cold or something was wrong. I, I tried to breathe. I took a deep breath and winced. There was a foul smell in the air. Suddenly I realized it wasn't the forest that smelled so foul. It was me. I looked down and saw my hands covered in a dark substance. I was naked. A sticky, glistening film of liquid cling was clinging to my skin. I could feel it on my face, in my hair. Blood. Spiritual. There was a whisper. The word resonated in my head. Garu. I knew what was coming. I remembered my dream and slowly lifted my head. The... Uh, dead bodies were strewn around. There was a severed head right in front of me. I felt sick, gained a rage, or I winced and I and touched it. I winced and touched it. Overcoming my disgust, I gently touched its wet hair and watched the head topple over. The face was contorted, eyes bulging, the mouth open, as though the head was struggling for air. I, I recognize that face. It's all got right. Oh, uh, Anya! Oh. Oh God! I recognized that face. It was Anya. Her braids, covered in with dry blood. It was my fault. Uh, I screamed, gained a rage. I cried, or I crumpled. I cried. Killed Anya back then. I felt tears running down my cheeks, and I let sadness in. Cornell is friendly. Um, the bushes rustled, and a moment later, I saw Cornell coming out from between the trees. He looked at me at the head and at my face. He came closer and squatted beside me. This is what we were trying to tell you, his gray eyes smiled. I see you're a werewolf. I looked up at him, I blinked. Everything faded to black. Poor Anya. Uh, 